going on ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another beautiful day here in San Cristobal de las Casas. I got a lot of comments recently on my uh, Raw in Mexico video, you know, the big kind of 7 day comparison, the 7 day analysis of what I ate and uh, a lot of these comments were saying, man, really inspirational stuff, I want to try this as well. Uh, what about minerals, what about protein, what about this and that, greens. Um, so I thought I'd make a little resume video, you know, kind of uh, the aftermath of the raw in Mexico experience. And I wanted to elaborate on a few things. I wanted to give you a few tips if you want to mimic this kind of diet, you know, for yourself. So that you can maybe avoid the mistakes that I made and, you know, have a good experience with this kind of stuff. So let's get started. Mm. So, as you can see, I've got my list here with the few key points that I want to cover. And I think in order to keep things interesting, I will uh, record this video in the context of a little walk around the city of, Sa of San Cristobal, you know, because the city is really beautiful and really photogenic. So the first point on my list is, and this is something that I mentioned already during my uh, seven days raw in Mexico video, it is that the fruit here is really satiating. And this might be due to three reasons I figured out. Reason number one could be the fruit is just super high in quality. And this is definitely true. It's super ripe. It's really high in nutrients. You can taste it. It's high in sugar. The avocados are high in fat. The coconuts are delicious. Delicious coconut water all the time. And delicious coconut flesh all the time. Also high in fat. And of course, all this stuff is kind of, you know, satiating. When you're getting these minerals in, you're getting these vitamins, these nutrients, and especially the carbs and the fats, you know. The, the macronutrients that really fill you up, you can get some nice satiation out of these fruits. And this is something that is dramatically different from when I tried this at home in Vienna, in Austria, because, because in Austria you will just have such a hard time to find this kind of fruit, you know, in this quality. And I couldn't find it, I just be honest with you, I just smashed in the bananas. I couldn't get satiated on bananas there because, you know, the bananas were all only half ripe. I couldn't get in the fats with the avocados because the avocados were only half ripe. So the second reason why the fruit here could be so satiating is that you burn a lot less calories when you're staying here. Especially in my case, you know, when I'm at home, I'm training five times a week. Uh, five days a week, even two th two times a day sometimes. And of course that burns a lot of calories. And uh, I'm pretty sure I've got, uh, I, I need 3,500 calories a day when I'm in full training mode, you know. And here, you know, I made a two week rest of from climbing completely, as I stated in the video before. And in the second week of this two day, of these two weeks rest, I conducted my raw week, so I was still not training anything. Actually, I was just recovering, you know, relaxing, enjoying the sun and stuff like that. So you don't burn a lot of calories in this state, of course. And it just could be that you, of course, need less fruit when you don't work out. So it could be that the fruit uh, appeared satiating to me because I did le need less calories. And the third reason why the fruit could be so satiating here is that I actually, and this is something that I just realized when I went over the data, when I collected all the data, you know, from chronometer, what I exactly eat in calories and stuff like that, I realized that I actually had a huge percentage of my calories coming from fat all the time. A disproportionately high percentage compared to my usual diet at least because usually I'm somewhere around 10 to 15 percent of my calories from fat at most I would say but here during the raw in Mexico experience I ate in between 22 and 23 percent of my calories from fat on average on daily average so that's quite a lot that's 10 percent more than I usually do and it could just well be that fat is more satiating it is the more sa satiating macronutrient so I don't know which one of of these reasons could be the most important one it could well be that it is a combination of the three but anyway the fruit here appeared very satiating and this is the first main point that I want to make here if you do not have this feeling when you try this it could well be that the fruit is not enough high quality you're not eating enough calories or maybe you could throw in a little bit more fats to get that satiation point the next point is on average 22 to 23 percent of my daily calories from fat and this leads me to a little bit of a, a story about food combining. 
If you want to eat a lot of fat, it is better to do this in, in the later stages of the day, during the evening or stuff like that. And this is a tip from me that I would give you in general, you know, regardless whether you're on a raw diet or on a vegan diet or on a, a standard American diet or whatever. If you like the high fatty stuff, eat it in the evening. The reason for that is that fat gives you this kind of lethargic body mode, you know, because it is so slowly digested. I mean, you have to realize you have two main body fluids inside of your body, okay? When people hear about body fluids, they usually think about blood in the first place. But actually, there is much more in volume, when it comes to volume, body fluid in the lymph of your body. And the lymph is this kind of slow-flowing thing that really goes through your whole body. It's in between every single one of your cells, you know? And this is a slow flowing fluid and the blood is it's less in volume, but it's kind of the fast flowing fluid, you know, transports the fast, the quickly available nutrients like oxygen, like carbon dioxide that you have to excrete from your body, like carbs, you know, when you digest carbs, they are quickly digested, they go quickly into your blood, go quickly into your cells. When you digest fats, it's not a coincidence that they get digested through the lymph system, through the lymphatic system, because it's much slower. When you um, ingest uh, fats, your cells recognize it and they build this kind of micelles, these kind of droplets, little droplets of fats. And the direction where they put these little droplets of fat is in the lymphatic system. And there they float around kind of slowly through your whole body. And after some time, there is a little, um, there is a little connection between your lymph system and your blood system. And then they get transported into the blood in a slow pace and then delivered to your cells. So as you can see, your body basically runs on the carbs that you ate two, three hours ago, but it runs on the fats that you ate two, three days ago, okay? Because your fats take, uh, take some time until they travel through your lymphatic system. So what this should teach us is that fat is, is a, it is a slow, it is a lethargic indu inducing nutrient, in my opinion, and also in my experience. If you want to have a productive day, an energized day, you want to be sharp all the time, it's better you eat the fats in the evening as kind of a sleeping drug, you know, when you smash in the fats, you get tired and then you can go to bed directly. In the morning though, when you want to be energized and wake up, you want to smash in the simple carbs, the fast digesting simple carbs with a fruity breakfast and stuff like that. So when it comes to food combining, also avoid mixing fats with simple carbs for the most part. You can experiment, experiment a little bit with that in the evening, but I would just smash in pure fats in the evening, the nuts, the avocados, the coconuts and stuff like that. So much about the fat, let's move on to the next point. One more thing when it comes to proper food combining and timing, you should start your day with some watery fruit like papaya or watermelon or stuff like that. Because when you start your day with dense stuff like bananas or dates, um, it's very likely that you get a little bit of a stomach ache in the morning because um, the the sugars, the your your stomach is just not ready when you're just waking up from the sleep. You know, it's just not ready to digest something so quickly like the sugars. It's gonna sit in there for a while, and if this fruit sugar and normal sugar sits in your stomach for I don't know 30 minutes, waiting waiting there for digestion you can get a little bit of a stomach ache. So my tip would be start your um, day with some low energy dense but high water content fruit like papaya or watermelon or stuff like that. And then when everything is lubricated perfectly and your, your, digestive, your digestive system is waking up, then you can smash in the high caloric stuff like bananas or dates. So much for that, now let's proceed to the next point. The next point is actually that I didn't lean out as much as I would have expected. When I did this at home in Austria and Vienna, I leaned out after one week of doing this completely. I had the feeling I lost every single drop of useless water weight. I lost all the fat, all the surface fat completely. You know, my skin was so thin, it was incredible. And, I, and this is of course in connection with the satiation thing, you know. I, I couldn't get satisfied there on fruits, probably I didn't get enough nutrients, enough calories and this is how I leaned out. Here the thing is completely different, I got satiated on fruit actually, I ate uh, probably more fats as well and thus after one week I didn't have the feeling that I leaned much out in general. So 
If you have the feeling when you're trying this, you're leaning out completely and extremely quickly, you're always going to bed hungry, you're waking up hungry, you're basically all the time hungry and never satiated, you're probably not getting enough calories, not enough nutrients. In this case, change something up, you know, try to get really ripe, high quality fruits, get more fats in. And this already leads me to the next point, which is water weight, the water weight question. You're going to lose unnecessary water weight and this is due to two major reasons. Reason number one, your sodium intake will be almost like zero. And reason number two, your potassium intake is gonna be really high. And you have to know about potassium. Potassium kind of pushes the unnecessary sodium out of the body. And with this sodium, as we know from water retention, goes a lot of water, you know. Sodium holds, lot, uh, sodium holds water onto your body. And if it's, gets, if, if it's getting pushed out through the kidneys by the potassium, you're gonna lose a lot of water as well. So be prepared to pee, to pee all the time, basically. You will be very hydrated. There is no, not, a, not a real fruit that has no hydration, you know, apart from dried dates maybe or something like that, which I wouldn't advise you to eat all the time. Get in those fresh, watery fruits like mangoes, papayas, all that good stuff, you know. And then you're gonna pee a lot. You're gonna pee all the time. So <laughs> prepare for that. It's nothing bad or something. It's actually good because your body is flushing through all the toxins, you know, getting rid of that stuff. And really, it's a really a healing diet. If you've got any kind of digestive issues, which is my next point actually, um, then you're gonna see dramatic improvement on this kind of diet. So if you're constipated or stuff like that, if you're having any digestive problems, prepare that it's getting better actually on this kind of diet so the the pinnacle of this whole thing is when you as i said already in the actual vid in the actual video when you need less time to poo than to pee you're gonna pee a lot because you lose a lot of water weight and you're gonna poo really quickly because your digestive system will work so well talking about potassium this leads me to the mineral and protein question so as you might have noticed when i showed you the the resumes of my of my uh, actual caloric intake with chronometer and all the nutrients and stuff you might have noticed that um, certain minerals were, were really low like calcium for example all the time and certain minerals were really high like potassium i just explained that you're getting a lot of potassium in with this diet the bananas the coconuts the mangoes it's basically the fresh fruit is so high in potassium so i was never below 200 percent of my daily recommended intake when it comes to potassium but i was never above 60 percent of my daily recommended calcium intake for example and i want to elaborate a little bit on this because some people might um, get scared and think, oh man, you're not getting enough calcium. Also, on every second day or so, you might have noticed that my protein was really low. And these days were the days where I didn't eat any pecan nuts, okay? The, the pecans, the pecans really boosted my protein to a point where everything was met in terms of nutrients, you know, and when I did not eat the pecans, I was not so fully nourished with, with proteins, I would say. So if you are scared of your protein intake, maybe get a little bit of more nuts in, you know. The thing with nuts is you have to be sure about the quality. You cannot get nuts that lie around for two years already in this kind of plastic bag or whatever because that stuff goes rancid with time, you know. So you also with the nuts you should try to get as fresh produce as possible because otherwise that stuff is techni technically not raw anymore. When it goes rancid it is like cooked stuff, you know. So you want to avoid that when you at least when you get a lot of nuts into your into your raw diet, which I would not necessarily necessarily recommend because all of the good benefits actually come with the watery fruits, you know, and fats if you're aiming for any detox or you know all these kind of hippie stuff losing weight and losing the water weight and becoming lean and sharp all the time in general fat is going to slow down this process okay if you want to get fast to that state to that state of sharpness leanness quickness in the mind also quickness on the climbing wall by the way then you're gonna have to go with the with the um, watery fruits with the simple sugars so the calcium question, let's talk about greens for a short bit because I got also this question in the comments, man, why, did you, why didn't you eat any greens? You could have eaten raw greens, that's part of a raw diet as well. Muchas gracias, little siren. All right, so where have I been? Mm -hmm. Calcium. 
What about greens? I didn't eat any raw greens in Mexico because I was unsure about the hygiene situation when it comes to greens. Simple as that. I would have eaten more greens if I could have been sure that this stuff is clean and if I had a high-powered blender here available, which is not the case as well. So um, the greens are of course important, especially when it comes to minerals like calcium, when you want to go 100% raw for a longer time because you want you don't want to deplete your stores, stores completely, you know. If you have clean greens available and a high-powered blender, I can only re uh, my tip would be, my recommendation, get a green smoothie in every second day of your raw experience. This way you just will replenish all the, the necessary minerals and stuff like that. And it's also a nice source of protein, you know, all these, these really dense green, leafy greens like kale and, and I don't know, in German it's called mangord, I don't really know the name in English and the spinach and and the stinging nettles if you have access to stinging nettles man it's the best green on earth when it comes to health okay mineral content amazing protein content amazing um, if you're aiming for that stuff get the stinging nettles in every second day and you'll be fine and lastly the potassium i had the feeling because of the the potassium the constant potassium overdose that i hate basically that i hate basically <laughs> no gracias um the constant potassium overflow sometimes when i had a really a banana day so to say okay when i smashed in like 10 bananas during this raw experience uh, back to back then i had the feeling of a slight uh, headache in the bed in the background i was not sure whether it's from the bananas or it could have been from something else i don't know but maybe that is the, the the overdose of potassium that comes to the surface here for a short period of time it was gone after 10 minutes again you know but when i especially also when i combined that stuff with a lot of coconut water you know coconut water i mean it's not like usual water where there's no minerals or a low amount of minerals in there and coconut water there's also a lot of potassium i think so you're getting the potassium from the coconut water you're getting the bananas in and the, another great source of potassium and this put kind of potassium shock you know i had the feeling that this caused a little slight headache in the background so if you experience this stuff as well my tip would be reduce it a little bit on the bananas on the coconuts or whatever you're eating that has a lot of potassium um, and avoid like the really potassium spikes you know smashing in 10 bananas in one sitting or something like that so i think i'll eat some more bananas now and conduct a little location change um, so that we can keep things interesting and have a little sightseeing tour i'll see you in a second with the last part of this video <sighs> all right guys so welcome back i'm sitting here in front of this church uh, it was an amazing approach here, I think, pff, I don't know, 100 steps maybe or something like that. And this is an awesome hill, you've got a really nice view over the city. And by the way, this is the church is, which is exactly at the opposite side of the city from that church um, that we were last time when I recorded this video about the push-ups and pull-ups workouts, you know. They obviously liked um, building churches on hills and with a nice view over the city. And I just smashed the mango in for recovery and that leads me to the next point. Always, or well my next tip actually, always be equipped with a spoon and a knife. I can show you this here in my example. I've got here this little spoon, iron spoon, and I've got this uh, Leatherman Micra here with which I cut open most of my fruit. And I say this because it enables you, it will enable you to eat any fruit, any time, any place without making a complete mess out of yourself. Because you're gonna get hungry, you're gonna have to eat a lot because, you know, the fruit is very light food, digests quickly and you will be hungry, hungry again. So you will eat maybe four or five times a day, you know. And here it's really handy to have this spoon and knife with you all the time because when you think about the, such a mango, what do you do without a spoon and a knife when you want to eat it? You have to peel it with your fingers and... If you manage to do it, you're gonna make a complete mess out of yourself and you're gonna think twice if you really want to eat this mango now, you know? And you should eat this mango. If you have, if you are hungry, you should eat this mango. Don't save it up for later. Eat it now. Get those carbs in. Get those nutrients in. So that's that. Always have a spoon and a knife. And finally, I want to give you 
a very important tip for when you come back to a normal diet again because that was actually the only really basic mistake that I made when I was on the raw in Mexico experience because um, I did this for one week and you know when you're digesting fruit all the time your digestive tract track has kind of time to slow down a little bit because fruit is so easily digestible you know the, in comparison to the cooked stuff you don't need as many enzymes you don't need as many acid you know um, to digest all that stuff because the stuff is just not so hard you know it's very well hydrated it's easily digestible most of the nutrients most of the macronutrients are already in their basic state you know proteins are in their form of uh, are in the form of amino acids and carbohydrates are in the form of simple sugars there's not much need for enzymes in the stomach and in the intestine to to break that stuff down you know and so your whole digestive system will kind of reduce effort a little bit you know when you're on this diet and this is a good thing because you have more energy left for the rest of your body to work out to think about stuff and this is what will increase the sharpness at the end of the day but anyway your digestive system will kind of calm down a little bit and when you introduce cooked food again it will have a little bit of a hard time to digest this kind of stuff you know and here my tip comes in start slowly so the first day you want to come back, eat fruits throughout the day for breakfast, for lunch and eat a tiny cooked meal for dinner and then leave it at that. Do not eat any more fruit or stuff like that. That was the major mistake that I did. I ate quite, you know, I ate fruit throughout the day, which was quite good for breakfast, for lunch. And then I ate a solid cooked day. I think it was some kind of pasta with avocado, guacamole-like sauce or something like that. It was kind of suspicious anyway, but I ate it. Let's leave it at that. And afterwards, I made a major mistake, and that was I got another big fruit meal in. And that that was just, it was just a major mistake. Um... I didn't feel anything on the evening itself, but on the next day in the morning I woke up with a terrible like stomach pain, you know, really uncomfortable feeling all the time. And it turned out that I actually had to throw this stuff up. And what happened essentially is that, you know, when you are eating it, your first cooked meal again, your body will be kind of shocked and it will be very, very slow in digesting this stuff. You know, all the digestive machinery has to kind of drive up again because it was so reduced during the fruit diet. So this will result in this uh, solid cooked meal to sit in there in the stomach for quite some time. So when you throw in another big fruit meal afterwards, this fruit meal is going to sit on top of that. And you don't want to eat something that takes a lot, lot of time to digest first and smash in something that's easy and quickly to digest afterwards. That's just stupid. You always want to eat the easily digestible stuff first and the slowly hard to digestible stuff afterwards. The hard to digest stuff afterwards. So you have to imagine solid cooked meal sitting into your stomach on top of that an easily digestible fruit meal, lots of sugars, fluids and stuff like that. If you don't digest this quickly, someone else is going to digest it for you and that's going to be the bacteria which harbor your digestive system. That stuff is going to ferment, a lot of toxic byproducts are going to be produced like alcohols, a lot of gas. It's really disgusting and all of that mixed with stomach acids and your digestive system uh, desperately trying to get rid of this and after some time it kind of boils itself up so much that you have to throw it out may that you eventually have to throw it out here my tip would be introduce cooked foods slowly at the end of the day and leave it at that go to sleep ideally eat it before you go to sleep so that you don't have the temptation to smash in something else okay and leave it at one meal and this is actually a general suggestion that I have for people who are on a normal diet even always eat those stuffs that are easily digestible first and the hard to digest stuff afterwards at the end of the day when you actually want to get tired and want to go to bed because that's what these foods are going to cause they will cause you to get tired and you know get into this kind of lazy lethargic um, digestive mode 
So that's that. That's my last tip for the raw experience, um, which is a very important one because you don't want to leave this whole stuff with the feeling, oh man, it's actually something shitty. I made a mistake or stuff. So to sum this up, my top tips for imitators of this raw diet. Um, take a look at how satiating your fruit is. You want to go for high quality ripe stuff. You want to eat some fatty stuff, you know, especially if you burn a lot of calories, if you're working out and stuff like that. Eat the fatty stuff in the evening, though, because it's going to make you tired. Um, take a look at the scale. Are you losing weight? If you're losing weight a lot, maybe change change things up. A bit more nuts, a bit more avocados. And take this kind of as an indicator if you're on the right path or not. But don't mix things up with water weight, especially during the first one, two, three days. You're going to lose a lot of water weight due to a lot of potassium intake and literally zero sodium intake. You can attenuate this a little bit by smashing in greens if they are clean. Because, you know, if you're in Mexico, then it's hard to get really clean, clean greens. So if you're somewhere where you have access to clean greens and a high-powered blender, get a, get a green smoothie in every second day to smash in those minerals. If you're worried about your protein, increase your nut intake a little bit, but be careful that it's not some rancid stuff. Go for the high-quality stuff. If you're worried about your calcium, get your greens in, as I said before. And if you're worried about a too high potassium intake, maybe reduce the bananas a little bit, reduce the coconut water a little bit. Um, especially if you're, I don't know, smashing in 10 bananas back to back and then you get a slight little headache like I got. I'm not sure, still not sure if it's from the bananas or something else. But in case that's the case, you know what you have to do. Just simply reduce that stuff a little bit. Always be equipped with a spoon and a knife in order to not miss out any meals. And finally, when you come back into the cooked mode, take it easy. Take it easy. Do it in a raw till four style. Only raw foods until four in the afternoon. And after that, one nice solid cooked meal and no fruits afterwards. Simply go to bed or enjoy some, some stuff on television, I don't know, and go to bed afterwards. Or whatever you want to like to do. And that's basically it. I think I'm gonna smash in one or two more mangoes now. Chill a little bit out in front of this church. Maybe check out the inside of the church as well. Who knows? Maybe it's pretty beautiful. And I hope you've got something from this video. If you did, please drop some likes and comments. Would be very interested to hear what's your opinion about all this stuff. And have you tried something similar maybe? What's your experience? I can only, if not, I can only recommend you to do these things because you can learn so much about nutrition just by experimenting with your own body and with experimenting with different foods. What kind of effects do they have on your well-being? Do you feel fresh and sharp all the time or lethargic and tired? What is the scale saying? You know, you can learn a lot about nutrition by doing this, basically. Write down your experience. Make some kind of diary, some kind of food intake diary or just like a training diary. You know, you can, of course, combine the two. That's what I like to do most of the time. All right, enough rambling. Um, drop some likes and comments and I'll see you in the next video, guys. Bye.